Hello, so hopefully you can all hear me okay. Um, welcome to the first Bruce Springsteen guitar live stream. Um, yeah, feel free to chat in the comments. Hopefully the I have tested the audio and video, so hopefully you can hear everything okay. And we're gonna go through lots of questions uh, from subscribe stars and patrons. So if you're not from familiar with subscribe stars, it's subscribestar.com forward slash Bruce Springsteen guitar. So this is where people can, you can subscribe uh, and get access to PDFs, backing tracks, guitar profiles. These are all sent out um, via email on the third of the month. So they're not actually stored on the... Um... Hi, Carl. Good to see you here. Good. Ralph, good. Thanks very much. Cool. Glad it's all working. I haven't played the guitar yet, so hopefully that works as well. Um, yes, yeah, so we're going to go through lots of questions. Um, throughout the uh, hour and hopefully um, you can get some use and benefit out of this. Um, yeah, so subscribe star is um, where I'm answering questions and Patreon as well. But uh, if you're thinking about uh, subbing, go on subscribe star because Patreon take massive fees. Um, but also a quick announcement, my website is now done. So if you're not interested in subscribing uh, and things like that uh, to subscribe star, uh, you can get files now just individual files, it's really cleanly laid out. So just go to jsmusicschool.co.uk and uh, you'll be able to get um, all the files there. There's, there's categories there, it's really easy to use. So hopefully you find that useful. Cool, so what we're gonna do, uh, so I'm using OBS, which I've never used before. So I'm hoping this all works. So the first thing we're gonna look at, this is a question from Carl. So, um, cool. yeah, sorry Ralph, there's no way I'm gonna be able to prepare that now. But yeah, Ghost is a great track. Um, yeah, and hopefully maybe we'll uh, do that in a future lesson. That could be one of your raw requests. So, so what we're gonna do is look at how, uh, I've had lots of people sort of say, how do I record? Okay, so how do I, um, how do I record my songs? How do I get my guitar tone and things like that? So funny enough, during uh, early lockdown, so uh, in the UK, funny enough, we're just be about to go into full lockdown over Christmas, which people aren't too happy with. Um, so at the start of lockdown, which is in March, um, I went into online teaching, and funny enough, my, both of my amps broke. So in previous videos, so I think uh, I've done about 90 videos now, uh, I've either used a Marshall uh, JVM210C uh, or a Fender Hot Rod Deluxe 3, okay? And then I've just plugged my Telecaster. So my Telecaster, you know, is a pretty inexpensive one. It's about it's a Mexican one. I bought it when I was 17, first proper guitar. It's been bashed around, played at school shows, badly out of tune, you know. Um, so it's not as if I've got a really expensive setup. So, um, so before my amps broke in lockdown, what I'd normally do is I'd um, plug my guitar into my amp. And generally with Bruce, uh, you don't often need, he doesn't have a big pedal setup like Nils has a, I remember seeing, getting quite close at Leeds in 2013 and you could see his whammy pedal and a big pedal setup. Well, Bruce, you know, he doesn't really, I don't think he uses that much thing. So in terms of clean crunch distortion, that's really what you need. You know, you need a nice telecaster for Bruce really and a nice bright sound. And then you plug it into a nice amp, get a clean, ideally a valve amp, clean sound, uh, for most of his stuff, uh, and then obviously, you know, some overdrive or uh, distortion, things like that for solos and things like that. But we can look into that a little bit later. So at the moment, what I do, because both of my amps are broken, I go through a Boss ME80, which is a fairly inexpensive, it's, I think it was about a couple of hundred quid, you can get it online. Uh, what I really like about this is it's, um, it's a really simple, pedal board because you get a lot of really complicated pedal boards now so again the picture might be quite small um, there um, let me know if the pictures are coming out okay there um, so basically you, you've got your sort of uh, main uh, effects you've got your preamp so at the moment for example all I have selected is the preamp and then an EQ I'm not even using half the pedals most of the time um, and they can just sort of check different amp settings. And that's the way I do it. So I don't think 
Um, I wouldn't say I'm using anywhere near the, the setup that Bruce uses, but you can kind of mimic the sound, you know, clean sound, make sure I'll get a good, nice, thick sort of valve amp, ideally. So that's, um, so that's the first thing I do when I'm, um, again, recording my guitar. So I will go into my Boss ME80, then that goes into a preamp. Now I've got a really old preamp, a Roland V Studio 100. Um, but any preamp these days will work fine. And funny enough, this will be kind of, um, won't work soon if I upgrade my Mac, because a lot of old preamps won't work with it. So that's, um, it's just a way of taking the signal from your um, effects board, or if you're going for an amp, from an amp, use a DI box or something like that, just sorts out the single signal, goes into a preamp. Again, you can get uh, preamps now for about 50 quid, you know, or uh, sorry, $50 or something like that if you're an American. Um, so the idea is you get something like that, simple preamp. Um, hi, Keith. Keith is my tech guy. He sorts everything else. He helped me sort out OBS the other day. So uh, thanks very much, Keith. Um, yeah, so the idea is you're going um, from, if you're recording from an amp, you go from a DI box. So the amp, plug in your DI box, that goes into the preamp, and that goes into the computer. Now these days you can get really, really good cheap, uh, they're called doors or digital audio workstations. So the, digi um, the um, digital audio workstation um, that I use is Logic Pro X. So I actually started using this during lockdown because there was, a, there was all these kind of COVID um, kind of deals on. Uh, and this is just a big upgrade from GarageBand. And um, GarageBand is just, again, I, I wouldn't say I'm an expert at all in music technology. I just like to press the buttons basically, like compression and things like that. And if it works, if it sounds good, then that's, that works for me. Um, for me, it's um, really good. If, you've got, if you're a Mac user, something like Logic Pro uh, works really, um, really good. Um, so yeah, that's my kind of my, uh, when I'm recording electric guitar into um, an amp or an effects board, and then out from the amp or the effects board into um, a preamp, uh, and then into Logic Pro X um, or any other, you can get free, um, you know, digital audio workstations. It's just, I find this works really easy for me with my kind of limited music technology skills. But I, uh, it's one of those things that you seem, seem to be getting better at it all the time. And I'm really, especially as I'm doing backing tracks nearly all, you know, every week now, um, or most of the time anyway. So that's kind of the first slide. So I hope that gives you some idea and obviously, uh, that's just for the electric songs. So for the acoustic songs, I will generally just plug my acoustic guitar, which is a Tecumini, uh I'll find out the model, I think a 5, EG 520S or something, it's a discontinued model. That only cost me about 300 pounds in the UK, so it's not like one of Bruce's 2,000 pound Tecuminis. Um Cool, thanks Carl. Yeah, I've heard of Reaper. Um, that probably, I've heard lots of good things about that. Again, I'm not a music tech geek, but again, just whatever works for you, really. Um, the main thing I always encourage with recording is get a good sound at source. You know, so get a, a decent level with the guitar. You don't want the guitar level to be distorted or weak. So, um, yes, um, good stuff. Okay, so that is kind of how I record. So, yeah, acoustic, I'll just go straight from my acoustic guitar straight into the preamp. I don't have any acoustic pedals. And, and then when we're in Logic Pro X, often what I'll do is I'll use some of the plugins there. So some really good stuff uh, and reverb and, and things like that. Okay, cool. So let's take a look at the next slide. Cool. Um, so the next question I've kind of got is how I kind of work out the songs and how it, you know, how I, what's the process for me recording these songs uh, and then putting them out to you guys, which obviously I hope you, you watch and you enjoy. Um, so the first thing I do in terms of, if I take a song, so uh, what was this week's song? I've forgotten it already. <laughs> um, shut out the light. Yeah, so I've, I've been recording, I'll show you a slide from that later from Logic Pro. Um, so shut out the light, that's been requested for this week. So this will, that'll be up tomorrow, by the way. So the first thing I do, if it's an album version, in fact, if, regardless of what version, I'll listen to the song first. Uh, sort of the album version, unless it's a specific live recording or something like that. 
Okay, so listen to that first um, and, and then work out roughly the chords, etc. etc. Now, if it's a live version, I also check out some live versions just in case, you know, if it's an HD version, I can look at his guitar and think, oh, okay, he's, he's got a capo and fret three there. That sounds quite deep on the low E string. He might be using an open tuning. Um, so basically, that's how I sort of start to learn the song. Um, yes, for example, Shut Out the Light, there's a version that's on, online, uh, I think from Paris in 1985, but he's complaining it completely different from the record. So it's, that's not very, um, very useful, um, to be fair. Um, but yes, the idea is any little sort of tricks and things like that, ideally like live HD versions when the camera's right on panning on Bruce is really, is really useful. So I can basically just look at what he's playing and copy it basically. Uh, but often, you know, Shut Out the Light pretty much worked it from the album version because the um, live version in Paris was with the capo and in a completely different key. So he does change keys up a lot. Um, so yes, also basic music theory would be really handy. Um, work, knowing some basic keys. So this is kind of uh, major scale theory, TTS, TTCS, you might not have heard of that sort of stuff. Uh, and then the idea is, you know, the chords or triads that appear in each key. So for example, if I worked out the first chord that Bruce plays is a G chord, but it's on capo three, I know it's probably a good chance it's in the key of B flat major. And then I know my chords for B flat major are B flat major, C minor, D minor, E flat major, F major, G minor, and uh, A diminished. So it's kind of having that sort of bass knowledge really helps me because I know, okay, he's playing that chord there. I know the chords already of B flat major, and that'll help me to kind of work out the song quicker. I also know kind of chord extensions and know my chords really well. So um, I know the cage chord system and things like that, so I can work out all the different positions. Again, um, check out my other channel, JS Music School, so I'm doing lots of 10-part series on this stuff, so it'll really help you. So a lot of it's trial and error. Um, but yes, really, some sort of fundamentals of, of music theory can really help so sort of work out. And again, if, as I was saying, if it was in B-flat major, chances are if there's a solo in it, I'd be using the B-flat major pentatonic or the B flat major scale. So you kind of, you're constantly kind of a process of elimination there. Cool, so that is the kind of the first part of working out the songs. Um, then what I tend to do, um, okay, cool. Yeah, thanks Keith, you keep chatting, I'm gonna keep talking. Um, cool, hi Max. Yes, I've um, had some interesting times. So I've got Shout Out The Light, I'm doing a, try to Im imitate a 12 string guitar. So I'll talk about, about that in a little bit as well. So basically I haven't got a 12 string guitar, although I really could do with one because <laughs> it was quite hard to work out. I basically just did two um, acoustic tracks, one uh, kind of lower down the neck and then an, one an octave higher to kind of mimic it. So hopefully you'll enjoy that when you hear that tomorrow. Okay, so um, then the next step is once I've kind of worked out roughly what key it's in, roughly what the chords are, I'll get a song structure going. So the song structure is what you'll see in the, um, that's just for me to break everything down. And it's just really useful to kind of um, remember, you know, the order of the song and things like that. Okay, so um, that's the song structure. That's the, and then my next step would be to tab it all out on Guitar Pro. So again, if you haven't got Guitar Pro, I thoroughly recommend it. I'm not paid to say that. Uh, I do get, I can give out discount codes because I've got a license with Guitar Pro, so you can get a 50%. I mean, think it's something like 30 pounds or 40 pounds. And you can, I mean, for the, the program, it's unbelievable. So um, if you're thinking about getting any tabs from Subscribestar or, um, or from the new website, jsmusicscore.co.uk, I thoroughly recommend getting it in Guitar Pro format. You could even export it out of Guitar Pro into PDF as well. And the good thing about Guitar Pro is you can slow down, speed up tracks, loop it. And also you'd have, for example, I don't know, think of uh, further on up the road, but it had like five different guitars. They all play at once. You can, you can kind of do one at a time. You can mute one while you play along with another. It's just phenomenal. So yes, yeah, so I would tend to do the main guitar first uh, in Guitar Pro, then add another track and then do some, uh, other work. Again, I'm always kind of referring to the song structure to make sure I've got, okay, so how many bars is the intro? Right, that's the intro. 
and uh, first verse and so on. And you also look out for patterns. Often verses will be eight bars, 16 bars, and, and then they'll be you know, repeated later on in the song. Okay, cool. So um, that's roughly how I'll work out the songs for the main guitar. And, and then the same with all the other instruments. Again, I'm not, I'm a kind of a ba very basic piano player. Uh, it's main to mainly right hand stuff, but I'll do the same sort of thing. If I know the songs in key of E major, I know the E major scale on the piano, I know the triads that are built up from E major, it allows me to work it out a little bit quicker. Um, so that's again, so some basic theory knowledge is really, really useful. So I would, um, if you're thinking about getting just a general better guitar player, learn your major scale theory, TTS, TTTS, the triads of each key, circle of fifths, um, sight reading and stuff like that. Um, and that will really help. Cool, so what we're gonna do now, um, so Carl was asking earlier about um, uh, how the backing track process, the creation process. So this has obviously been, I've been doing this a lot more in the last year or so, especially if we've been locked down <laughs> and things like that. Um, so the idea is how I make my backing track. So again, it's just a process now and I'm kind of fine tuning it because if I have to make a backing track in the guitar solo video for subscribe stars and patrons, I'll have to spend a lot of time that week and I often spread it out for the week. So I don't know, Tuesday I'll do some social media, Wednesday I'll then think, right, I'm gonna do the song structure, Thursday I'll tab it out, Friday I'll do a backing track, Saturday record, Sunday edit. So it's quite a long process, but it's kind of, it's always a good feeling once it's all done and uh, they're out there. So yes, so the first thing I will do is if it's a rock track, I will um, program the drums first, okay? And I, so I, I program these in Logic Pro, I just take one of the kits they've got in there. Um, and if you're not familiar with kind of um, Logic Pro stuff, it's, it's worth looking into that. So you've basically got this kind of, kind of matrix window and you've got the beats, one, two, three, four, and you put, say, the hi-hat, you think, oh, Max is on the hi-hat. Again, I'll watch videos on YouTube, you know, oh, he, he's playing the hi-hat there and he's playing quavers. So one and two and three. So I'll just put one and I'll ping it in a um, in Logic Pro. I'll do one and two and three and four and, and then they'll think, okay, where's the bass and the kick drum? Because I play drums as well. So one and two and three and four and the snare often is on two and four, bass drum pattern, I'll work that out. And then that's maybe a two bar phrase that I'll copy for four times for the intro. And then I'll just do all the fills and things like that. So that's all done on, on programming. Again, lots of trial and error on, on logic um, and things like that. So that's the, uh, the drum programming. So that's the first thing. It's mainly just to get the song structure. And what I'll do is I'll label it. Okay, so intro and then first first, and then, so the idea is I've got the whole song structure first laid out on Logic, again, or any other digital audio um, workstation. Okay, so, um, yeah, so thanks for everyone for joining. Uh, I'm hoping you, you're, uh, you're enjoying this. Again, give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and don't forget to subscribe as well. This will also be on uh, YouTube, I think, afterwards. This is my first one though, so uh, yes. So that's the, the drum track, we'll do that first. Then I'll do all the other kind of MIDI instruments. So I've got a, a, an M Audio key station in front of me here, you can't see it, but um, it's basically just, it's just ones and zeros. There's no sounds on this keyboard, and that just plugs in via USB into my computer. As soon as I open up Logic and put a, what they call a software instrument track, so I can pick any instrument I want, a grand piano, a organ, a harpsichord, uh, a saxophone. Again, it's not quite Clarence. Um, you know, it's just simple MIDI instruments. But again, the sounds these days seem to be getting better and better and better. So I'll do those one at a time, depending on the song. For example, if it's, if it's a piano heavy song, um, I don't know, something like Jang Jungle Land, which I haven't done yet, and I <laughs> could do with a break uh, after Thundercrack. But yes, so if it's a piano heavy song, I'll probably do the piano first because otherwise there might be big gaps where there's just, just nothing, you know, you know, so put the more important instruments first. So piano and then organ, 
saxophone. And again, sometimes it won't be note for note. You know, I might just do a, an organ solo in the style. You know, again, just think about the key, what key it's in, and then just do a solo that's similar to what uh, you know Daddy Federici is doing or Charlie Gordano. I can't remember what his name is. Um, you know, the new guy that's been there. Well, not new. He's been there for years now. But um, Yes, yeah, so I'll just do it in layers. So everything tends to be in, a, in an order, okay? Um, so that's the MIDI instruments. Now the next thing I'll do is probably do a backing guitar. So I'll look at Steve's and Nils' parts. Again, sometimes it's difficult to know who played which on the, on the recording uh, because I'm kind of doing lessons every week. It's often time limited, so you know, I'll just think, well, okay, not that I'm like, oh, that will do, but I, I'll always aim to get a really good quality track every week. But I'll it might nece not necessarily be the exact thing you know that's on the record. I'm doing my own kind of take on it, but as close as possible. Um, often with uh, sort of Stevie Van Sant, um, the way that they work it and Nils is they, it's, it's all about layers. So Bruce might be in standard tuning, um, but then. Um, you know, uh, Stevie will have a capo on fret one and doing different chord voicings. So it will kind of get, thicken that sound up. And then you've got Nils maybe on a capo on a different fret, you know. Wouldn't be surprised if you have Bruce on standard tuning for one song, Stevie capo one, Nils on capo three with different sounds. And that will really give you those layers. Uh, and that's why it makes it so good. All those different voicings, it's just brilliant. So. So that, again, especially when I'm recording stuff like Roy's parts, I'll often, because I'm not a pro piano player, I'll like do two bars at a time, stop it, record it, and then I'll do the next two bars. So often, you know, if you hear a lot of piano in the backing tracks, it will be, uh, it may not have been recorded all at once. I might have just done two bars at a time, or even the right hand first, and add the bass notes. So, you know, tomorrow's video, video shut out the light. I did this some violin stuff that comes in in verse three. And then I thought, oh, actually, I put some bass notes and I just record that over on top. So it's all about layers. Yeah, so that's the, um, the third step of making the backing tracks. And then once I've made the backing track, I will record that in Logic Pro. And often, because again, time sensitive, I'll have Logic Pro up where I'm recording my guitar over that backing track for the walkthrough. And then I'll have Guitar Pro up, which I kind of time, I do a click track. So because I just not really have time to memorize it off by heart. I'll actually sight read it that I've tabbed out or sight read while recording. So that's why you might look, you see me looking quite confused because I'm just concentrating so much because if I make a couple of really bad mistakes, I will probably start re-recording. So uh, hi, Joe, thanks for joining. Um, Max, obviously Keith, Carl, Chris, Hollyman, uh, long time supporter, Ralph, and everybody, thanks very much for joining and watching. Hopefully, you're finding this useful. Um, let me know if you need me to, to if, if, the, if the volume is uh, cuts out or anything like that. So, yes, so that's part four. Once I've made the backing track, I'll record it, play it into Logic Pro, record it into a Logic Pro, and I have my Canon M50. That's the camera I use. And I've got some posh. Uh, sort of YouTube lights that kind of blind me so I get enough light. Um, currently where I'm living at the moment, I'm right by a window, so you might see the light. It's really hard to control the uh, the light, so often it gets dark and, um, yeah, often, you know, they say sort of film. Um, hi, Ryan, thanks for joining. Hi, Jim. Um, hi, Joe, uh, thanks for joining. Uh, much appreciated. Um, hope you're finding the video is useful. Tom Jode. Great name there. Um, cool. So, yeah, so that's kind of, again, there's always room for improvement. So in terms of if you've, if you've watched my old JS Music School videos from five years ago, which not many people have, and they are just cringeworthy. Again, it's one of those things I would keep improving 1% every video um, and, and, you know, just keep improving. So lighting and things like that, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm a pro. I, I, I use the kind of basic lens on my Canon M50 and just make sure there's lots of light uh, and so on. And then basically I actually use iMovie, which is a pretty, again, it's free on the Mac. So that's how I actually add it, edit my videos together. So I'll take the video 
from the you know recording on the Canon 50. I plug in my uh, card. It's just a normal you know 32 gigabyte card. I'll go into iMovie. Once I've recorded my song into Logic, I'll then export that uh, as an MP4. Uh, it's a high kind of resolution, not high resolution, but big file size. And then the idea is then, once I've got the audio from my um, Logic Pro exported, you then line it up. So you look at the waveforms. So you don't want the audio from the camera. That just sounds awful. And you look at the waveforms and then you line them up. And then I take out the camera um, audio because it just sounds really bad. Okay. Um, so that's kind of how I do it. So hopefully that fine. Again, I'm quite happy to answer any questions about any of that stuff. Um, so feel free, yeah, any questions, let me know in the comments and I'll, I'll, I'll aim to answer any. There's kind of quite a lot of stuff I'm throwing at people. Um, but again, in terms of guitar sound and things like that, I, I'm literally changing settings all the time and pressing buttons. And, uh, you know, even yesterday I found out that it was a really nice, accurate tuner on Logic Pro, you know, which, you know all those sort of things. It saves me getting out my tuner and, and all that sort of stuff. So. Um, same with Guitar Pro. I've never had any lessons on how to use Guitar Pro. I just pick up shortcuts and uh, and things like that every time. And um, again, yeah, if you want to get some of the uh, cool, thanks, Carl. Thanks, MLL Android. Oh, Max is just about to ask a question. Cool. Cool. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, it's quite a lot of work, but you've got to keep it going, keep the fans happy, as they say. Um, Cool. So um, that's the kind of the the, the uh, make, making the backing tracks. Um, so what I've got here is I've just basically got a a screenshot a screenshot of um, my latest recording that I've done for tomorrow. So this is just the backing track. Um, I kind of not rushed it a little bit, but I worked a lot yesterday. Um, to make sure I can get ready, do some prep for this live stream. So all these slides I've just done today uh, whilst watching the football in the background. Um, I was hoping that Liverpool would lose, but that wasn't the case. They won 7-0. I'm a Spurs fan anyway, so I hope that doesn't put you off watching the videos. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, so this is basically a screenshot of my Logic um, project for tomorrow. Again, there's loads of stuff on here. I don't have a clue how to use, but again, I think it's this very sort of standard layout of a digital audio workstation. So I've kind of got your main, you've got the main instruments up here. So SoCal is basically a drum kit, and then I've got um, two acoustic guitars there. So this, um, for shut out and light, <coughs> basically I've got one in standard tuning, and then the second one I've got is a, the same kind of chords, but with a cap on the seventh fret. Um, that's just a mimic a 12 string guitar uh, with the video tomorrow just if, um, I won't have probably have time to record uh, a, a breakdown for the steel guitars but they will be on the tabs um, so um, yes yeah, just time sensitive this weekend but um, so that's yeah again I've already done the drums there's no drums in this song for shout out the light um, I think in the second verse, there's a tambourine that comes in on beat four. So I've just put that there. So that was a nice, again, nice, easy. So Thundercrack, for example, I spent about two days just doing the drums because um, early, the early Bruce stuff is by far the hardest and um, almost challenging, should I say. And um, it's Vinny's stuff when, you know, he does a, a fill every two bars. You're like, oh, not another fill, Vinny, but... Um, but it's great. It's a good challenge. Um, but yeah, a lot of the Mac stuff is a lot easier to transcribe drumming because it's, I think, Bruce hired him for his simplicity and the fact that he doesn't go, it's not too jazzy. But um, again, it's kind of the appeal of the early stuff uh, that, you know, it's a really nice different sound. And, and I love, love a lot of the early stuff. Um, so yeah, obviously tomorrow's drum track is pretty simple. It's just a tambourine, but generally that'll be I'll double click on that and another window will appear where you basically have this kind of matrix window. You put the hi-hat in, you put the kick drum in, you put the, the kick drum um, and there's things like velocity. So you, you mix it up a little bit. Uh, so two acoustic guitars there. These are violins. These are kind of um, 
there's some violins. Again, it's very hard to get it exactly the same as a recording. These are proper, been recorded in a studio for hundreds of thousands of pounds. And this is just a, me playing on a MIDI keyboard. Um, but again, they can be quite nice. Um, and then uh, at the moment, I think I'm thinking about getting some harmonica. Um, so I'm just looking at all the questions. There's loads of them just come in. Uh, thanks, Carl, for behind the he scenes. And hi, Delash. Thanks for Delash is one of my pupils. Um, his daughters also one of my pupils as well. Doing really well. Um, oh, sorry, Andy. Yeah, so Andy's also one of my pupils. And sorry about that because he's a Crystal Palace fan, so I apologise. Um, cool. Yeah, thanks for the positive words on the Thundercrack track. So yeah, so this is my um, my window for um, this is my window for uh, shut out the light for tomorrow. And again, this is a much simpler backing track here because there's no piano in it. It's just a bit of violin that comes in on the third verse, um, and then the main guitar here. So I've recorded the walkthrough. Uh, I then go and edit it afterwards. So I put the tab all over it. So I, the tab is basically done where I basically just do a screenshot of the Guitar Pro window, and cut out lots of little pictures of the bars. I know there are other ways of doing that better. I just haven't got round to looking into it properly yet. Um, hi, Peter from Italy. Hi, Kim. And uh, yes, um, again, thanks everyone for joining in. Okay, so um, that is the kind of process roughly for making the backing tracks. Um, so hopefully you find that relatively useful. Again, I'm just sorting out levels. I do things like putting in this thing called chroma verb, which is just, I just put it at 20% generally. I don't really know. You can set like, you know, if you think it's, um, it's a really big live setting, you can make it sound like it's more in a stadium. Uh, and then compression. Again, I don't really understand the physics and how it works, but I just press the buttons and, and hopefully it sounds nice. And there's things like panning, you know, whether it comes out the left speaker, right speaker, uh, and effects and stuff like that. For example, the Tunnel of Love solo video that you can see on Subscribestar or Patreon, that's got loads of chorus on it. So I'll just, um, again, you can use a chorus pedal. Often I'll just record it clean and then put a chorus effect or modulation effect on Logic afterwards. So that's kind of the um, the kind of recording process there. Cool. So the next questions, people sort of, I think it was Ralph, um, Ralph Stern. Thanks for joining, Ralph. Um, okay. So Max, I'm still beginning level and playing guitar. Do you have a good exercise to play pickings accurate without looking? Okay, we can get to that in a second. That's quite a cool little question. Okay, so. Um, so this is basically Bruce's common tunings. Now, there's a lot of Bruce songs that I haven't done yet. A good thing about having a Bruce Springsteen guitar channel is I don't think I'll run out of songs to do for a while. Um, and on the whole, he uses standard tuning, okay? So that's just basically E, A, D, G, B, and E, okay? So make sure, um, hi Jim, I'll, I'll look into that in a second. I can't particularly remember the uh, distortion setting, but I think I roughly can remember. Um, that I think in terms of prover or night uh, distortion setting, I think what I did is I've got a crunch setting on my Boss ME80 first. Again, just a standard overdrive, crunchy sound. You might not even need a pedal. People sort of say, oh, what pedals do you get? Often, for example, my Marshall, uh, when I used to gig with that a lot, before it broke, I need to get it repaired, but there's no gigs at the moment because of COVID. Um, I would actually, the, the distortions ch channel and overdrive stuff in, in Marshalls are unbelievable. So I would actually just use the foot switch that came with the amp to get a distortion. You know, you don't all, often have a, to have a pedal. Um, so yeah, for, I think for Prove It All Night, Jim, thanks for that question. I'll probably plug it in um, with a crunch setting and then maybe tweak it uh, with Logic Pro afterwards. So um, I probably, there's this there's thing called like, um, ah, MXR Distortion, oh, very cool. Um, yeah, so he might have had specific pedals um, for each recording. That's quite cool. Uh, thanks for answering that question, Ralph, for me. Um, but yeah, often you, you can just kind of tweak it. I just like a really thick, rich sounding, you know, and I, as you can see in the videos, <laughs> Um, 
really, you, you, I was aiming to give it a little bit more energy than I normally do because it's just kind of such an energetic performance that it's just amazing. Um, I was kind of glad when it was over though because it was just quite exhausting, but it was uh, it's always a good feeling once they're done. So yes, yeah, standard tuning on the whole, I would say. Um, and this is just based on most of the videos I've done so far. And he will do capos a lot, especially if it's a live version. You might not like, it might be too low. Again, this is to do with music theory. You might think, well, actually my voice can, it might sound better at a higher pitch. So what they'll do, um, you know, he'll just put a capo, you know, if instead of it playing on, you know, if you played a normal D major chord, and then put, you think, well, actually, that might sound a bit more energy to it if I raise the key or it suits his voice at that particular time. Um, he'll put a capo on fret two and just raise it up by a tone. So even though he's playing the same shape, it would actually be an E that's coming out rather than a, a, a D. So capos are used a lot. And don't think, oh, what's on the album? He'll always play live. I've seen, out, I've, I've seen actually throughout the decades, I was doing a video, I can't remember what video it was. But he was doing, you know, in the 80s, he played it in this key, and then the 90s, he played it in this key. So, again, it could be a lot to do with his voice and etc. cetera. So, um, cool. So the other, I would say, really popular uh, acoustic tuning, uh, and I've got three videos on this. So there is a playlist. Uh, if you just type in Springsteen C, G, D, G, B, D tunings, that's a really common... Um, cool, yeah, so that's interesting... He can do falsetto, Carl, um, yeah, really well. Um, I remember some of the, those um, live DVDs. He can really hit some of those high notes. Um, but yeah, maybe I wouldn't be surprised, you know, if he's got the flu or something, or he's playing with a bit of a cold, he might just say to the band, guys, we're doing it in this, we're dropping it down a tone today. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm knackered. Or I wouldn't be surprised if that's the, th the case, just to make it easier for him. And I know Bruce likes to keep the band on their toes and just sort of, you know, come up with uh, with, with things, challenges for them. Um, you know, I saw him in Cardiff play TV movie and he hadn't, I don't think he'd ever played it. And he said, oh, what key is this in again? So, like, oh, let's play it in G. So he's even kind of working out on the spot on the day sometimes. So that's basically, in terms of music theory, that's a G over C tuning. So what you've got here is you've basically got the three notes of G major chord, which are G, B and D. Again, some knowledge of music theory will really help. And then basically with the C in the bass. And it gives you this really deep sound. So tougher than the rest, acoustic, help for heroes. Got a video on that. That uses that tuning. The Rising Broadway. Um, I think there's another one that I've done, but I can't remember. I haven't put on the list. But yes, yeah, so there's three I've done. So there's a playlist on that, so you can check that out. Um, and in terms of... Now, I know there's probably lots of other tunings I just couldn't think of any at the time. So I think drop D, he probably uses, and I might have even done some videos on there. Uh, he might even do some open G tuning, so that would be D, G, D, G, B, D. That's more kind of famous with Keith, Keith Richards, uh, Rolling Stones. Rolling Stones is just so good. Um, again, the, the thing with the Rolling Stones is you've got Keith on open, open tuning, and they tend to have Ronnie on standard. I know that's not always the case, but the combination of those two guitars locked together makes it sound so good. So you, you'll have that in the E Street Band as well. Um, so again, again, as I said before, lots of capo and live versions change all the time. Okay, so that's kind of the common tuning side of things. So the next question, hope that it helps. And again, I know there's probably a few others, maybe he detunes the high E string possibly. Um, that's quite common. So instead of when you play a C chord, I think it's a C add nine or something like that. So little things like that, possibly open tunings. I'll generally say though, it's standard tunings on the whole from the videos that I've done so far. Um, okay, cool. So let's take a look at, <sighs> yeah, you're probably right, Carl. Yeah, I love the Stones. Um, although they are very hot on copyright, I think. So, and I've already had a few issues. So. For example, my merchandise, I had that taken down, the Bruce Springsteen guitar. You might have noticed I've changed my logo. I had to go to Bruce Guitar. So you have to be very uh, careful with that sort of stuff. And I know that um, the Rolling Stones people, I think, are quite hot on that sort of stuff. So, uh, yeah, so um, I just, yeah. Okay, so what we're going to do now is look at kind of 
people are sort of saying, how do we get that brew sound? Um, so I've talked a little bit about the what I do for settings. Again, a lot of time it's, you know, get a telly, really. You need that bright sound. You can play with your pickups um, and just make sure it's, it, you, you know, you've got the tone pot on your guitar, you know, a reasonable. It's not, if it's really muddy sounding, you won't want that. You want it quite high up, the tone pot on there, making sure, you know, you've got the pickups. If you've got the neck pickup, that's going to be a warmer, softer tone. If you want it really biting and bright, and go to the uh, bridge pickup. So play around with that, that will really help. Um, yeah, 2025 is probably about probably about right, guys, yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's in terms of uh, sort of the sound. Um, I'm not sure if anybody knows the amps, even though I've seen Bruce about 37 times, I can't remember, especially if I had a few beers, uh, what amps. <laughs> It's got, but I know they use a lot of Vox amps, I think. Um, yeah, Vox amps, but uh, yeah. Again, really nice, thick sounding valve amps. I think that's what you want to get, and a Telecaster. So, and also, if you're going through, another thing to bear in mind, that I say to my pupils, you don't want to have a thousand pound guitar going into a 50 pound amp, you know, unless you've got a really good deal on the 50 pound amp. You know, you just want to have something that complements. It it's kind of tends to be, and as I always say, it's about playing the parts first. A lot of the tone is in your fingers, you know, how you control. Um, ah, cool. Thanks, Robbie. Um, that sounds about right. Um, yeah, so Fender amps, it can't go wrong with Fender amps. Fender clean sounds are unbelievable. And they've got some good distortion sounds as well. So um, that is... Um, kind of, yeah, some more help with the sound there. So in terms of, but I also recommend, again, getting your chops up, basically, you know, um, when it comes to learning solos, you know, pentatonic scales on the whole is what Bruce will use, you know. Um, and then chord-wise, making sure, you know, guitar's in tune and also the Bruce-type chords and picking. Make sure your strumming is really accurate. You practice playing with a metronome. Um, Again, hi Tom, yep, Strat and Les Paul is amazing. You can't go wrong with those. I really want to get a Strat because I love, um, I sort of teach guitar to sort of disco stuff, Noel Rogers and things like that. So, you know, Strat, you can't go wrong with Strat. And also my favorite guitarist of all time is actually Slash. So Les Paul, um, you're supposed to be seeing Guns N' Roses at Tottenham Stadium, which would have been great, but it got canceled because of COVID, hopefully next year. So. Yeah, you can't, um, a positive grid, yeah, I've heard of those. Hi, Gary, um, thanks for joining. Um, so I've missed anybody's name out. Um, cool, yeah, so what we'll look, is, look at now is, I'll pick the guitar up and hopefully you can hear it. Again, this guitar has been battered around a hell of a lot. Um, so let me know if you can't hear that. So what we're going to look for, look at look at first is kind of a common kind of strumming that Bruce does, and if you've watched a lot of my videos, you know he has I get <clears throat> like most people really common strumming patterns that he'll just kind of change. He might not even know he's in this strumming pattern all the time, but it's it's a really common um, pattern that's in lots of my videos. So check out lots of them. Um, down, down, up, up, down, up. So once you've got hold of this pattern, you can play. Thanks, Carl. Um, um, you can play a hell of a lot of Bruce stuff and, and just generally a hell of a lot of songs, really. Um, so down, down, up, up, down, up. Um, he does indeed. I remember seeing it at a, uh, Gary, the telecast. So I saw it at the, when I saw him at Madison Square Garden. Um, this is when I used to spend far too much money and rack up a credit card bill on Bruce, which I've now paid off. It's taken a worldwide pandemic to pay off my Bruce debt, which is, which is bad because I should have paid it off years ago. But anyway, um, I, there was a the um, museum, a pop-up museum in Philadelphia. I went there for the day and he had his guitar on show there, the classic one there. It's just the, the, the beaten up one, but it's just can, oh, amazing. Um, I've also met his guitar tech in Wonder Bar, Kevin Buell. Um, so he's the one that throws him all the guitars. It's quite cool. I know he's done a lot of work to that Telecaster, I think, but I'm not sure what. Different pickups, things like that. Uh, so yes, yeah, strumming pattern-wise, again, some basic music theory will really help. 
uh, learning to play to a metronome as well. Uh, something like Lumbeat to really recommend, so it's free on YouTube. Again, I'm not endorsed by them or anything like that. I use it all the time on lessons, and it's basically just a drum beat. So practice playing with Lumbeat, uh, you know, different tempos, uh, with all your different strumming patterns that will do wonders, and a few scales as well. And often, as I say to my pupils, you kind of got the analogy of the porridge and the raisins. So the porridge is all your scales, your theory, and it's what actually makes you much, much better. And then you got the raisins, which are the songs. So most people tend to try and go straight for the raisins without, you know, which is the treat. Um, um, yeah, sorry if you don't like that analogy, but yeah, that's kind of, it's just simple. Yeah, you know, the, the best stuff to do is work on your theory, work on your scales, work on your cage chords, you know, being able to play a C chord up the neck, all that sort of stuff will just help, help you make a, you know, a better guitarist. So, down, down, up, up, down, up. What we have here is one crotchet. Now, because a lot of my fans are from America, uh, thanks, uh, and, and well, thanks to everybody watching, but um, I think when I look at my views, about 40 or 50% of you are from the States or Canada. So uh, last year I've been referring to the musical rhythms in the Western terms and the US terms. So the Western terms being crotchet, quaver, and so on, the US terms being whole note, half note, etc. So that's why I've been doing that. Um, okay, cool. So, <coughs> a part caster, yes. Um, I think eventually I'll probably have to get one of the kind of a signature model made up for me with the, the roughness of it. That would sound cool. So that's why I mentioned that in videos because I've got a lot of US and Europe audience. So a crotchet is basically one beat or quarter note. Same thing. So one, if you did the whole bar, it'd be one, two, three, four. Then you'd have six quavers or eighth notes. Okay, so they're half a beat each. The way you count quavers, one and two and three and four and. And then there's a tie, which means your first upstroke is, rings out for a little bit more. Um, and this is how it sounds. So down, down, up, miss up, down, up. Again, that's definitely uh, a strumming pattern that you want to get really comfortable with, switching between all types of chords, bar chords. He wouldn't use that chord, but um, just getting really comfortable with all those, uh, that strumming pattern and changing between open chords, bar chords, that will really help learn Bruce stuff. So again, for some of this stuff, he does a lot of picking. Um, so if I did the same pattern now, but picked through the chord, I just realized I've forgotten to answer a question. Um, a question from, who was it who asked about picking? Ah, I've, sorry, I've lost it. It's, it's good that people are asking, um, chatting, let's keep chatting. So I think it was a question about picking. So hopefully if I, um, I remember this, but, yeah, so picking, if you haven't done that before and you're just used to strumming, I'll just learn a few picking patterns to start with and also work on your alternate picking, okay? So I think the question earlier, something like this, um, to work on your string independence without looking, that was it. So an exercise I give to my pupils all the time, again, this is what I call the porridge side of things, is a, called the achromatic scale. Again, it's very dull. <laughs> Yeah, thanks Carl for repeating the question. So this is the achromatic scale. And what you really want to be able to do is you're, you're basically sinking your right hand uh, or your, your strumming hand, picking hand with your left hand or your fretting hand, okay? Now, without looking, yeah, the best way of doing it is exercises like this. So this is the achromatic scale. I'm going five, six, seven, eight on the E, four, five, six, seven on the A, three, Two, two, one, sliding up and going five, six, six, seven, eight, nine, back to the fifth fret. I'll show you that one more time. And what I'm doing with my um, fretting hand is that's the really important thing. Down, up, 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 down, up. Move that over and you're coming down, reversing it. It's a great warm-up exercise. When I was at college, ACM in Guildford, 
Um, they used to do this as a warm up most lessons. Uh, you can just do two minutes of it. Um, it's really good for using all four fingers as well because a lot of people like to avoid using a little finger like the plague. Um, so five, four, three, two, six, five, four, three, uh, six, five, four, three, seven, eight, nine. Yes, that's right. Yeah, there's a chromatic run in. Um, So I, funny enough, I used to play that in my band. I've forgotten it already. Whatever it is, I'm, again, that shows you how long I haven't gigged for. Um, but yes, chromatic run um, in Bourne's Run. But in terms of, again, practicing in your alternate picking, um, exercises, yes, I will show you that again, Ralph. So what I'm doing, starting on the fifth fret of the, the E string, with my picking hand, I'm going down, up, down, up. And the idea is you're doing four um, fingers on each, four frets on each string. You're using all four fingers. And what it's gonna do is exercises like this will really help to sync your hand up. So when you're doing these picking songs, you, you can kind of feel your way. You won't have to keep looking at your right hand because you won't actually, eventually you won't want to look at your right hand at all. You're looking at your chords. Um, so that's, it starts off on the 5th fret, then it goes to the 4th fret, 3rd fret, 2nd fret, 2nd fret, just the way the guitar's tuned, um, you're doing the, the, the frets, when you're on the B and the G string you're doing the same frets, 2, 2, 1, and slide up, 5, 6, 6, seven, eight, nine, and there. In terms of the theory, you're basically doing all of the notes from A. So A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A. It's called uh, two octaves, and then you do the same thing. And then back down. Most people find back down because you're starting with a little finger. Six, six, seven, eight, nine. Ralph, if you send me an email, I can send you uh, a uh, PDF or guitar profile of that. Not a problem. So hopefully you find that useful. That, that's something I would, I would work on uh, for your picking. Um, also scales, when we get onto pentatonic scales, you know, um, have a look at my playlist on JS Music School where I go through loads of exercises, you know. Um, and once you've got all these different exercises, when it comes to those exercises in appearing in solos, you're laughing. So let's just take a common pentatonic scale, E minor pentatonic, from the 12th fret, the most common one. 12, 15, 12, 14, 12, 14, 12, 14, 12, 15, 12, 15. Again, um, for those practicing your picking, down, up. Down up, 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 down up. So that's the, and then the idea is then you'll start to do exercises again. If my fretting hand, really conscious, I'm going, this is now groups of three. Again, check out my playlist on YouTube on James Music School channel. Down up, down up, down up, down up, down. This is called groups of three. Again, this will really help. If you're struggling with some of the picking stuff, eventually, string skipping is if you're struggling and you're hitting the wrong strings all the time, thoroughly, thoroughly recommend doing string skipping. You can also do that with that uh, exercise that I just showed you. Um, the idea is with the pentatonic, if I just show you here, string, string skipping, you do the E string, skip to the D string, go back to the A string, skip to the G, go back to the D, skip to the B, go back to the G, skip to the E. Again, check my other videos for that on the other channel. Because um, that's just gonna give you some more independence. Um, yes, don't forget, yes, yeah, so on any YouTube video, you can slow down the playback as well. Um, thanks very much, Andy, for watching. I'm glad that you're practicing your cage chords. That's what I like to hear. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, in terms of looking at the down, down, up, up, down, up pattern, 
then we can do this with a picking. Again, he'll vary all these patterns up, but again, these are kind of sort of the fundamentals. And then from there, practice a few other strumming patterns and you're mixing different rhythms. So, so that's basically the same strumming pattern, rhythm, down, down, up, up, down, up, but with picking. It's also worth mentioning with picking, um, Bruce does a lot of, you know, uh, he plays his picking often with, like he was doing arpeggio. So I'm not gonna go into arpeggios, but like down, down, and then up, up, up. Often like with my pupils, I encourage them to do alternate picking. Again, this will help with that uh, sort of uh, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up. Or if it's a rhythm like this, I'll, um, like down, down, up, up, down, up, I'll do the same picking as I would strum. So if it was like this, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up. It's also good to get used to um, in terms of strumming, bass and treble, like, and things like that, accents. Again, there's a whole load of things we could talk about here, but yes, work on that, kind of those kind of two core patterns, I think. And then a lot of the time, it's just variations of it. Okay, so let's now look at, kind of look at some of the kind of common Bruce chords. Okay, so what we've got here, um, now after watching lots and lots of Bruce videos and doing lots of lessons, I've come across uh, a lot of people sort of saying, is there a particular way Bruce plays chords to make it sound Bruce, you know? And everyone has their own sort of style, but there is definitely a few, um... yep, you're right, uh, Tougher Than The Rest, a great example of that. Um, so G chords, especially Bruce, play these, these quite different to a lot of other people. Um, again, music theory would be helpful here, but not essential. So this is a sort of a way that Bruce plays a G often. He'll play it with his second, third and fourth fingers. Um, sometimes he'll block out the A string. So it's still a G chord or put his middle finger down. Okay, and then he'll also maybe also play it with his little finger on the B. So that is actually a G5 chord, okay? So that is a power chord. So it's good to know that power chords are though kind of thicker sound, they're not major or minor. So this chord I'm playing here actually only has two notes in it. A G. Yep, suspended fourth and two. I can go through a few of those as well. Suspended chords are amazing. Thanks for pointing that out, um, Gary. So it's a G5, little finger, third fret. So. It's good to know that a power chord, and this is an open power chord, only has two notes in it. This has a G, a D, a G, and then another D. I'm blocking out the heat, the high E. So even though it looks very similar to a G, it's not a G chord, it's a G5 power chord. So anytime you see the, the, num the na number five, it's a G5 or A5, it means there's only two notes in it, just duplication. So that gives it a sort of thicker, slightly different sound. So G5, E5. So that G5 and E5 there sounds completely different than say G major and E major or E minor. So it's good to kind of um, uh, be aware of some of that, like with the tabs uh, and things like that that I've done. So not that I should be encouraging this technique wise, but he does do a lot of the time, he uses his thumb for this chord. Which is D over F sharp. Now, from a guitar teacher's point of view, I wouldn't encourage you to do that. It normally shifts your hands over. Things like that. Very American rock sounding. It's like G5. Uh, D over F sharp is basically a D chord. But the F sharp is moved to the bass note. So that's called a slash chord. Nothing to do with the guitar is slash. Um, but that's what they refer to. Now he does that a lot. It's very good for a passing chord from saying going G. Or G5, um, D over F sharp, E minor. So like a running bass line. So that's something I've really kind of, um, yeah, Mark Bowden, yeah. Exactly, power chords. Um, I used to love playing that song. Um, exactly, power chords, it can give you a different, completely different sound. Um, 
you know, to a major or minor chord. So it's worth being aware of that. And when Bruce uses a power chord, when Bruce uses a major or minor chord, or a seventh chord, or a sus chord. Um, but yeah, learn the basic ones first, you know, learn this style. So he'll often play that with his thumb, but you might also want to play that D over F sharp. Again, you'll have to block notes out as well. I'm blocking the A string and the high E there. Play it with your first, second, and third, or fourth. So that's a D over F sharp. He'll often play it with his thumb. And especially if he's singing, he, he does, a lot of the time he does his voicing, I think, for ease, to make sure he can focus on his vocals and keep really similar chord shapes all the time. So that's, again, open tuning as well. It allows you to play all the strings, you know, focus on his singing. So that's D over F sharp. Now we've got um, C add nine. Again, very kind of common chord. If you're going from that G chord or G5, you can leave your little finger there do a C add nine chord. Um, second, third, and fourth fingers there. Again, nice kind of, kind of common chord in this kind of tunnel of love sort of stuff. And by doing that little finger, he, I think he often plays his D chords like that, or D5 power chord. So the little finger can just stay there. Really small chord changes. So he's focusing in on his lyrics, storytelling, uh, and all those awesome kind of live stuff that we see all the time. G add nine is another kind of one that he plays a lot as well, which I think is... You know, it's, that's more sort of sus two stuff, but that's two faces. Uh, one of my favorite um, Bruce songs, actually, amazing song. So G add nine, and often you know when he's speaking to the crowd, when he starts, you know, uh, shout the light, he'll do things like that. He'll play around with these really nice open chords, you know, just to pick through them check his tuning, um, you often see him do that and then quickly change his tuning as he realises whilst he's talking to the audience he's out of tune. Um, so a G add 9 chord is in some of his uh, slower songs, something really nice. Um, uh, and sort of blinded by the light style, he'll be doing sort of D over A chord. Where he'll play kind of, um, I call this the all right now chord. So third finger, fourth fret, D, first finger, second fret, G, middle finger, third fret, B. So that's a D over A chord, so that's sort of blinded by the light. I can't even remember how to play that, <laughs> that was only a few weeks ago. Um, okay, so that's D over A and things like that. So it gives slightly different voicings there. Also his bar chords, F sharp minor over C sharp. So instead of playing a whole, again, you can see this, I've picked this up just mainly through watching him doing it rather than actually um, <coughs> on the album versions. Sometimes it's quite hard to pick out exactly the voicings he's using. But again, the live versions, especially the HD ones can really, yeah, you could be right there, Ralph. Um, I think he was even playing this on the Shut Out the Light um, version from Paris I was watching, but completely different version from um, the one we're doing, the album version tomorrow. So, uh, but yeah, you could well be right there. It's, he does that a lot, a lot, that chord, really nice. Uh, again, E5 power chords that we've already mentioned. Again, there's gonna be a lot of that tomorrow, stuff like Seed. Power chords, palm muting is a technique that you really want to get used to. It's one of those things where people say, oh, how do I do palm muting? And it's for, as a teacher, again, like my drum teacher, you know, when you're sort of teach, teaching people kick drum, um, bass pedal, kick drum technique, it's very hard for the teacher to see exactly how much pressure and things like that. But palm muting is something you really, if you want to get to some really good sort of bruise playing, D over A. I'm using my third finger, Ralph, there. But you could use the little finger as well if you wanted to. Um, he does use his little finger more than uh, a lot of people, I think. So, okay, so that's D over A. He also plays a lot of chords up the neck, like, 
um, like a D shape and just move it up. Um, lots of things like that. Power chords, bar chords, he might, F sharp minor, he especially likes to play it where he blocks the low E string. You have to be very quite careful with this kind of shape to um, cork, glad you um, learned your palm muting. Carl, that's good to hear. So palm muting is where you're basically using the fleshy part of the hand to deaden the strings a little bit. But you've got to make sure, again, it's like learning to drive when you're using the clutch getting that biting point. It's, it's just lots of trial and error and eventually you'll do it automatically. You're not kind of, it's got to be automatic when you're playing. Um, thanks, Carl. Yeah, so I've got uh, some videos on palm muting on my um, JS Music School channel <clears throat> um, with some of the uh, strumming pattern uh, stuff that I've been doing recently. So, so that's palm muting. Again, you, you don't want it to completely mute it kind of keep applying pressure and getting that biting point. So you want to hear the notes clearly, but it's still, yeah, not palm muted. In fact, he starts off Steve, uh, seeds, I think like that. So again, really good technique um, and a really awesome, um, yep, yeah, 10th Avenue freezes out. Uh, probably use that, okay, I did that a while ago, so I can't remember that. Also, maybe even broken E shapes as well, possibly. I think Bruce does stuff like that as well occasionally. So that'll be like that broken E shape, middle finger 11th fret G, bar the 10th fret B and E strings. And that's basically a D major triad on three strings. I'm sure he's got some of that, in, especially in his early, uh, his early stuff. Uh, blinded by the light, all that kind of stuff. It was a bit, little bit more advanced. Uh, um, what's my favorite Bruce song to play along to? Oof, that's a tough one. Thanks for the question, James. Um, I don't know, I used to play Darkness on the Edge of Town. It's not necessarily the complicated ones, actually. Um, it's just more my favorite songs, I suppose. Born to Run. Um, thanks, Carl. Glad you're uh, finding the usefuls. Happy New Year to everyone as well. Um, yes, so um, lots of variations there chord-wise. Again, as I was saying, this F-sharp minor chord, instead of playing a four-bar chord, you'll often play it like this on five strings. It's basically the F-sharp minor chord without the low E string. Third finger, fourth fret A, little finger, fourth fret D, then bar that. And if you're playing this, for example, in the key of A major, then it'll go to an A major chord and bar it with his first finger. Again, another very common chord. So if I was doing like, uh, was it? Don't Look Back. In fact, Don't Look Back is one of my favorite, even though it's a B-side. So uh, favorite ones to play, I love that song. I think it's really underrated. Um, yes, I did enjoy Prove It All Night, but I was also <laughs> exhausted afterwards. So I had to get it done in four days uh, before going to a family trip, the only one I've had this year on lockdown. but. Yeah, I mean, that's just an unbelievable live version. There's actually some songs that people have requested recently that I hadn't even heard. I, I mean, I thought I was a big Bruce fan, but yeah, some of you guys are incredibly uh, big fans, um, which is, is good. My first E Street, being a Tottenham fan, my first E Street show was actually at the Arsenal Stadium, which was kind of weird, uh, 2008. But then I did manage to do 37 in about 10 years. So I really went for it and yeah, racked up a lot of credit card debt, but it's all gone now. But yeah, no, I prove it all night. That solo is just amazing. Um, also, that incident on 57th Street, uh, I think it was CJ um, who requested that one, the live version. I, again, I hadn't heard that version before. There's, I mean, there's so many great live versions and and um, I've even had some requests that I hadn't heard properly before. Mr. Outside, I know that's on the, the ties that bind, that's coming up in the new year. So, um, and there's loads of stuff um, I like playing. I, my, I love playing Born to Run in my band, um, my covers band. We play Born to Run, and I always in introduce it as the greatest song ever made. Um, although it's not normally a, a wedding-friendly song, but I just play it anyway. I think it's, it's normally gets people going because it's such a brilliant song. We've got all the our keyboard player plays the sax on that as well. So yeah. So anyway, let's go back to the F sharp minor. <laughs> chord um, so I just definitely think 
he'll do that more for ease, you know, he wouldn't, if he's singing. F sharp minor to an A, it's a nice change. So instead of playing that full bar chord, he might play a stripped down version. Same with the B minor. You might play the middle four strings rather than playing the high E. Little things like that can make it sort of give you that nice bruised sound. Um, so yeah, in terms of um, Blacks and Jackson Cage, again, I know I've done a video on that, um, but um, yeah, I can't, be, to be fair, I know it sounds crazy. I know I've learned these songs and put videos on them, but uh, I would have to practice a lot of these songs. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, I, funny enough, that's an underrated song in terms of learning. People um, uh, sort of underestimate how complex the strumming pattern is on that uh, on that song. Um, again, sixteenth note strumming. Um, yeah, common keys. Yep, F, F Thunder Road, E, Born to Run, Badlands. Yep, very common. Um, also, Stevie in terms of Badlands. You know. Uh, Actually, that's one of my favourite um, for my school show. I do like a school, a school of rock type show with my my pupils. I always tend to pick some Bruce songs in the set list. But like, um, uh, like Stevie was stuff to do like. So he'll do so also do those kind of E shaped bar chords. So minor, major, but just on five strings. So again, really gets, you know, you don't necessarily have to do the whole bar um, for that bruised sound. You know, Stevie does that all the time. Cool, and also again, scale-wise, I would really encourage you to practice your pentatonics, pitch bends, so. This is a A minor pentatonic. Practice your pitch bend. Nothing to work out. Um, he's very aggressive player, so you often kind of get these uh, kind of pinched harmonics type sounds, where it's just really aggressive, sort of playing with a pick almost. So that's another cool little trick there. Also, when you're doing your bends, a really uh, good trick that I get my pupils to do. So if you're doing the A minor pentatonic, you can watch my video on my other channel, Jace Music School, for that is say we're doing a bend here okay this is these are the common bends i would say in the first shape of the pentatonic that one this one this one and then the three most common bends you'll probably ever come across um so if i'm doing a full tone bend here the pitch will be a tone okay so what you can do if you're struggling with your pitch bends play the target note and then bend up and you've got that, your ear's getting accustomed to how big to bend up. Again, do different types of bends, bend and release, and listen to what, um, cool, yeah, for sure, yeah. Um, lots of bends, etc. Cool, so that's all, I think it's pretty much I wanna go through today. I hope you've enjoyed the video. There's probably loads of other stuff to maybe uh, talk about in future. <clears throat> In, in, in future uh, videos. Uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, Darlington County, yeah. So you'll you use those pentatonics in conjunction with, not Cadillac kind of Ranch, but yeah, um, I've got that coming up actually. But yeah, so often you combine the pentatonic with kind of chord. So there you go, that was that kind of, um, uh, what was chord is that? I've just completely lost my train of thought there B flat major chord there um, so that's that's um, Darlington count not sure if I'm playing the right key but yeah pentatonics and also different chord shapes as well so um, yeah I think thanks very much for watching I think we'll leave it there for this time the time being um, thanks everyone for joining and being involved um, and on the chat and, and helping people out I really appreciate that again if you're um, if uh, check out, haven't already, check out my new website, jsmutescore.co.uk. Always got Bruce t-shirts as well, mugs, everything. Um, so, um, although they might not arrive before Christmas. But um, hi Luigi, again, it's good to see all the people that watch a lot of my videos. I really appreciate you commenting on all the videos. And um, 
really, really appreciate you uh, joining the channel. Yeah, and if you'd like to get into the guitar tracks, PDFs, you can either go on subscribesire.com or if you don't want to bother with a monthly subscription or don't like the format of the website, you can literally go on my new website and you can download it straight to your computer. Just click the type of file you want, go to the Bruce shop, click shop, click back in tracks, um, um, click back in tracks and then just pick the one you want and it just basically downloads it directly to your computer. I've done lots of testing on the website and uh, yeah, thanks very much. Looks like somebody's got to go to Tesco as well. So <laughs> anyway, so um, thanks very much everyone for watching. Uh, any comments, you know, we can keep discussing this. I'm quite happy to answer any more comments in the, the comment section below. Please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I will, um, yeah, maybe see you on the next one. So um, really appreciate you watching. See you next time. Cheers. Bye.